I'm live. Hello. I'll just wait for people to jump on. It's my first time doing a live on YouTube. We just decided spur of the moment, last minute. I have to get this side done because I didn't finish this up the other day. This is going to be my video for Friday, so I'm going to do this anyway. So I thought, why not just set up my phone? My husband's available to help me. So we are going to do this tonight. So I see a couple of people are hopping on. Hi, guys. Can you tell me who's here? Do you see names of anybody? Wave and say hi so I can say hi to you guys. Um, luckily, I have my husband, Mike, who you guys have seen in some of my videos. He does all my building for me, and he's available tonight to read the comments for me. I'm usually having to do everything by myself. So we are out in the garage. It's really, really hot in Tennessee right now, and we have the garage doors open. Um, we're worried about bugs coming in, though, and sirens and you know, neighborhood parties, I don't know, going on. So we'll see how the sound goes. Oh, hi, there's some people on here. I'm so excited that you guys are joining me tonight. Um, so this is the piece that I'm working on for Friday's video. This is um, a dresser that was in my son's room. It's actually the first piece that I ever painted with Dixie Belle paint. It used to be blue. So I had to strip this whole thing down and sand it down to get everything off. Oh, hi, Belinda, how are you? Thanks for joining my membership. I was so excited to see your name on there. Oh my gosh, from Australia, I love Australia. Our pastors of our church are Australian, so we have lots of Aussies in our lives. Um, and I actually did a trip to Australia in like 2010 or 2011 um, with my church in Minnesota, so I love Australia. Oh, hi from Georgia. From Minnesota. Minnesota. We lived in Minnesota too Canadian. for a few years. Canadian. <gasps> Winnipeg. Okay, we I love Canada too. We have a really good friend who is from Canada and his music music name is Brad G, Brad G Kids and he just put out a new song the other day that we have been jamming to with our kids. Um, so you guys could, should go check it out. It's called Throw My Worries Away, Brad G Kids. Go check it out on Apple iTunes, what are all the things? Amazon, music, all the things. Hi from Iowa. Oh, I can read this. Stacy from Florida. Hi. Hi, everybody. Do you want me to tell you what people are saying or are you reading? Oh, no, I'm reading some of it, but okay. you can tell me too. Okay. I'm, I can read it right now. Hi, Tasha. Is that Ad Adeline? You love, thank you for being so kind and loving my channel. Elaine from Boston, hi. Oh, from the Philippines? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. How do you say your name? Is it Kristen or is it Christine? Christine. Um, Seattle, hi from Seattle. What was that, that name say from Seattle? I can't read that far. I should have put my glasses on you guys. Denise from California, hi guys. Okay, so we're gonna stain tonight. I will get into it since we have some people on here. So this is the piece that's gonna be on my Friday video. Um, it's going to be produced like you normally see my videos. Um, I had to strip this piece down completely to bare wood and I didn't finish this side and I just decided to go live and show you guys what I'm doing to it tonight. But there will be a full video where I should go through the whole process and have the music. We're going to have bugs out here because we're in the garage right now. Um, and my husband is helping me. So he's going to be reading your questions while I'm on here. So if you just have any questions about painting or anything that I'm doing, or just anything you've seen me talk about before, he'll be able to read those off to me. Um, so we're just gonna get started. So what I'm doing here is I'm going for a coastal weathered driftwood look on this wood. This is something that I've done before. Um, I like to use gel stain for this. So this is the product I'm gonna be using tonight. This is the Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain, and this is in Pickling White. Um, the reason I like to use a gel stain is because it's very pigmented and I usually only have to use one coat with it. Um, it is oil-based, so you have to be really careful with this. There are all kinds of guidelines on the back and I do my best to follow them. I typically, when I'm working with this, do wear a respirator, which I know are really, really hard to find right now, but I have had mine for a while. Um, but I'm not gonna be able to talk to you guys if I wear my respirator. So we have our garage doors open. We're really ventilated in here. Um, I really highly recommend working with this stuff outside and not really doing it in your house if possible. But if you are doing it in your house, just make sure all those windows are open and you're getting lots of air. Um, and you know, there's lots of info on here about oil-based can be combustible and stuff. So you just wanna be really careful and make sure you uh, throw away everything correctly when you're finished. So read, read, read your labels. I always preach that. 
Is it okay to use on an outdoor deck? I wouldn't use this on a deck, first of all. You're, it comes in a very small product like this. If you're using something for a deck, I would go to Home Depot and get something that's specifically made for a deck and to stand up to UV rays. Um, but oil-based is really good to get pigmented, get you one coat, and it goes on really evenly, I find, and rubs off very well, so I'm gonna show that to you live. So what I do when I'm working with this is I always wear gloves. Um, so these are nitrile gloves. I just have like a big pack of these that I can always pull from. Everything that I'm using today, I already linked down in the description box if you guys wanna check that out at any point. Um, all the products I'm using today are linked in there. And those are, most of those are affiliate links. I do have an affiliate um, with Dixie Bell, and then some of the stuff is linked on Amazon. So just so you know, if you do buy through my links, I get a small commission and I really appreciate that. Um, no extra cost. At no extra cost to you, um, you get, you know, you can just help support my channel and help me buy paint and keep my projects rolling and like my beautiful lights I have right now. And now I can pay my assistant that's sitting here <laughs> because you guys you help me out with my affiliate links. I can't afford him. This is such a treat, you guys, to have my husband here because he is like my number one fan, but he has a full-time job, so he doesn't really get to help with my channel a lot. He mostly just keeps me sane and is moral support. And fun fact, if you guys didn't know, he named my company, so he came up with the name Pretty Distressed. Um, and he helps me with my contracts and all the, he helped me set up a bank account. And so he does lots of stuff like that um, that my creative mind doesn't like to do. So um, this is what the gel stain looks like, if I can show you. So it's really thick, which is another reason I like it because it's easy to work on a surface like this because it's not going to drip down. So um, I've used this several times, so um, you know it's probably like half gone. So you just have to give it a stir. Um, it's it's called gel stain, so it's got like a gel like appearance, which I also like because you know the what like not the water based stain, but the more watery stains um, that aren't gel stain they just splash like everywhere and they're, they're definitely not as pigmented. So you sometimes have to do a couple of coats on them. So I have my gel stain all ready to go. I just apply it with one of these cheap foam brushes. You can use like a chip brush. You can use Dixie Belle has these cool applicator pads that you can use, but anything that you're using with an oil-based stain, Oh, we have a question. Hold on. Anything you're, anything you're using with the oil-based stain, you're going to have to throw it away. So I like to use these because, um, well, you could clean them up, but it's harder to clean oil-based stuff up. And I like to use these because they're like a dollar a piece, especially if you buy them in bulk. What was the question? Can you use it over old chalk paint? Um, you can. Dixie Belle, actually, you can use these as a glaze. Like once you um, have chalk paint on, you can use it as a glaze, which is kind of cool. Um, another good thing about it, which I'm going to tell you on here, as you can see, I don't have all my old stain off because it's just really, really hard to get old stain off. And I personally like the effect of having some shadowing in here. That's just, I like stuff rustic. If you've been following me for a while, you know I like rustic and shabby and distressed. And these gel stains can go over existing finishes. So even if this had like all the gloss on it still, you can go right over it, which they have a really dark one that's called espresso. And you could put that over a tabletop, like something that's really blonde oak, and it would just look like gorgeous, like a really dark, rich, deep stain. And you don't have to strip it back. So that's something that's really cool about gel stain that I like is you can go over an existing finish. Hi, Brandon, how are you doing? I recognize your name from some comment sections. Okay. So I'm gonna start, sorry, I'm like so random. <laughs> My husband's gonna have to keep me on track here. Um, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna move you guys in a little bit, put you down. And just, you know, you guys can ask me questions as I'm going if you have any questions. So um, I'm gonna work in small sections on here. You wanna work in like a two, little two foot section. So I'm gonna start doing just this first little plank here and show you how it looks and then we'll talk about it. What you wanna have on hand right away besides your glove, your gloves, your protection, your foam brush. You also want to have um, a wiping rag close by. I'm going to be using these. I talk about these all the time. These are Intex paint and cleaning rags. They're lint free, so I use these to wax when I'm using chalk paint too. They are on Amazon, but they've been selling out a lot on Amazon with everybody home and shipping online. 
Um, so they're kind of really highly priced on there right now. So I did link them, but they do have these in store at Home Depot if you feel safe enough to go out and get them right now. And they should have them on Home Depot's website as well. And they have a bigger pack than this, but I haven't been finding them. But this 50 pack lasts me a pretty long time. But I love using these because they're great for absorbing stain and they're great for waxing. So I use them both a lot. Um, there's one other thing I want to tell you about these. What was it? It has slipped my mind. It might come back. No, there's one other thing that I wanted to tell you. Oh, I know what I want to tell you. With this gel stain, you don't want to use a t-shirt to try to absorb the stain because it's just really going to push it around and not absorb it. So you want something really absorbent. So I like these Intex cloths, but I also, if you don't want to buy these, if you want to go a cheaper route, shop towels are awesome, super absorbent. Um, they cut, could shed a little bit, but I kind of use them interchangeably with this. So I might try one of these sections with this just so you can see how this goes in case you have any of these at home or you don't want to invest in these little rags. And you can reuse these um, with water-based products, but with these oil-based products, we are going to have to throw these out. Okay, um, the, uh, the last thing before you start is you want to just take a tack cloth and I have dusted and sanded and cleaned this and I'll tell you how I did that whole process um, in the video coming out on Friday. So you guys are getting a little bit of a sneak peek, but you just want to make sure that all the dust and stuff is off and a tack cloth is a great way to do that because it's kind of sticky so you can see how I'm getting all that residue off before I get started here. Okay, and so what I'm going for here is like a coastal look which is a driftwood look, which you would think putting white stain on here is not gonna achieve that, but it really cuts this yellow out and creates a really beautiful effect. So I just got a lot of stain on here and I'm gonna work with the grain. So what I mean by the grain is you can see the lines in this wood here. So I'm just gonna go up and down and go with the grain. And paint I'm gonna cover, yeah, paint the fence up and down. <laughs> Who likes Karate Kid? We had a friend tell us the other day that he had never seen Karate Kid and we were like shocked because we were both born in the 80s. So that was like our jam. Okay, so I'm gonna get this completely coated. I'm not like totally worried if not every little nook and cranny is showing, but I'm only just gonna do a small section like this, put my little um, sponge aside, get my towel and I'm gonna wipe again with the grain. And I don't wanna leave this on too long because I don't want it to, I still wanna be able to see through it. So I'm just gonna rub and it'll get like outside of the section that you're doing. Don't worry about that too much. But I really wanna make sure that I get as much of it off as I can. But like, how cool is that? See how that lightens that up? Okay, all that old finger. Who's on? Metal finger. <gasps> Dana, Dana, how are you? I swear to you, Dana won brushes, you guys, like on one of my videos months and months ago, and I could never get a hold of her. And then I finally got a hold of her and I was like, oh my gosh, you won these brushes, can I send them to you? And then this whole thing happened, so I haven't been wanting to go to the post office. But um, I'm in Tennessee and things are opening up around here, so I promise you I'm gonna send you your brushes next week. So I will send you a message when I get I them out. I will probably be sending them down. Yeah. He will, he will keep me accountable and he will get them out. <laughs> okay, so see like how, I mean, and in person, I love this even more. I don't think it translates as well on video. So it'll be interesting trying to get this video put together for you guys. But I just love how it takes like that yellow out and it's that weathered wood, like that coastal like driftwood look. And I just think that it's really, really beautiful. And I think I mentioned this earlier, this piece was the first piece that I painted with Dixie Belle paint and it was a bunker blue because um, at the time my son's room was, it was like little foxes and it was orange. It was like his nursery. It was orange and um, navy blue and white. And then we built him a bunk bed, which we have a video on and we changed it to like gray and black is kind of his scheme and we painted his whole bunk bed gray. So he has this beautiful bunk bed that my husband built him that's like shiplap. And we painted that a hurricane gray, Dixie Bell hurricane gray, and it's super dark. Um, so we just wanted something, I wanted something light and natural in there. I didn't want another painted piece in there because I wanted to break it up a little bit. So that's why I picked this look. And it'll be really white like this when it's wet, 
And then as it dries, you can see that this one is way lighter than this one. But I just keep rubbing. You want to make sure that you don't have any splotches. Why well, Barbara to see the front? Oh, I can't show you the front. I can't show you. And the hardware's not done. You have to wait. Yeah, and the hardware was gold because it looked really, really good with um, the, Navy. the Navy. And I bought some black hardware and I put it on the other day and it's too small. And it's, um, I think the, the black is just too drastic. So I'm going to play around with the hardware this week and maybe play around with the patina paints from Dixie Bell. If you guys haven't seen those yet, they're metal based and you can rust them and stuff. So I haven't decided. I mean, this piece is one of those pieces, you guys, that like <laughs> I started it and then I just didn't work on it for a week. And then last week I was working on it and I was like, there's no way I'm going to get this done, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, it's just one of those pieces that's just been taking me a long time. Um, I do that a lot on my personal pieces because I like to play and if it's going to be in my home like I really really spend like a lot of time on it um, and go back and forth and get indecisive so but this has been really fun but it was a beast to strip you guys working with citrus strip and stripping a piece especially that has paint and varnish is really really hard um I forget how hard it is. I probably do it like once a year and every time I go into it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this takes forever. But it is really worth it because like, this is cool. this is beautiful. But it took a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be like, this is so easy to do because stripping furniture is not easy to do. And I have a Orbital Sander, a, De a DeWalt one. Um, and if you guys have watched my videos before, you know that I use that a lot. Um, and it is like a super great investment. I mean, I bought that we bought that so long ago, before I even had a YouTube channel. Sorry, I was paying attention to what you Oh, the about. DeWalt Sander? Oh. <laughs> he's such a great, he's such a great host. Um, I bought that when I repainted our bathroom vanity uh, before I even had a YouTube channel. Like, I don't even have a video on painting that bathroom vanity, and I actually did it with latex. Um, but, so I bought that for that, and it's probably like $70, and I have used that for years on projects. And so it's great for beginners, but I think I'm at the point where I need to invest in a more heavy duty sander. So I've been so, researching that a bit. Marilyn says she's been contemplating painting her mom's china hutch that she inherited. <gasps> she's scared to take the plunge. Don't know what route to take with the painting. Okay. So, I mean, you have, we have a, Precise example. To we that. do have a precise example. So if you have not seen my video that I put up like three weeks ago, um, it's an Annie Sloan dining hutch. It's our dining hutch that's in our dining room. And I actually didn't tell the story about it in that because I cut all that out because it got too long. But that set, our dining table and our china hutch are actually my husband's grandma's set. Her name was Eleanor. And I never got to meet her, but her dining table and her hutch were passed throughout his cousins and his family and when we were in Illinois it ended up like in our dining room and um it was very they're like old Italian it was very fancy and um very dinner ornate every dinner every Sunday around that table dinner pasta dinner at that around that table and so it was very sentimental to a lot of people in um the family and I was so scared to paint it <laughs> because I didn't want to ruin it. And I was like, oh my gosh, if Eleanor were alive, she might be really mad at me. But once I got everything done, I mean, it, it to this day, it's still in our house and I still photograph it and I still share it on Instagram. And that's why I did that video a couple weeks ago because people kept asking me if I had a video with that finish. And it was the dining table and the hutch were like probably the fourth and fifth pieces I ever did. So they were really, really early in my career. Um, I was blogging them, but I didn't have a YouTube channel. And I had basically just started out and we still have them in our home and we love them. And it's- You have a whole blog post on it, right? Yeah, I have a couple of blog posts on it, but they're not very good either because oh. they were right when I was starting out. But um, so I, my advice to you is do not be scared because you're giving that more life. And you know, whoever those came from, they would be so proud to still know that they're in your family and that you love them. Um, even though they're painted. And you know, my grandma didn't really like painted furniture either, but she was so sweet to me about all my stuff before she passed away too. So I say go for it. And if you want a little bit of encouragement, go watch that video. Um, and yeah, I think you should definitely do it. You should tackle it. Don't be scared. 
It's just paint, you guys. It's just paint. Anybody can do what I do. It's super easy. And I get scared all the time and mess up all the time, but you can, there's always a way to fix it. Belinda, if you're still on, I want you to try to use one of the emojis if you can. I want to see what they look like. Um, so I just launched memberships on Thursday, I think. So I have a couple of different um, options just for extra benefits and like some Q&As I'm going to do and um, like quick turnaround time on questions that you guys have on my videos and stuff. And I worked with a designer and created some loyalty badges for you guys that are these cute little paint brushes um, that'll pop up next to your name in live chats like this. And they'll pop up anytime you comment. And then when I do my premieres on Friday, you'll be able to have that loyalty badge. And you can use these fun little emojis that I have that are like a coffee cup with a paintbrush on it. Because you guys know I love coffee and painting. If you've ever seen that shirt that I have. Um, and then there's a little emoji of me. There's your emoji. There's my emoji, Belinda. Oh my gosh, so fun. Sasha, hi, with the coffee mug. Sorry, my voice just Very got like, voice. my voice just got like 20. <laughs> I'm so excited about these emojis. They're so cute. Uh, Mel, visit yourself, wants to know if you have any advice for someone trying to gain a following on YouTube slash Instagram. Oh my gosh, guess what? So my third level on my membership is called Brand Builder. And that is going to be for all my YouTubers or wannabe YouTubers or just starting out YouTubers or anybody in furniture painting that just wants to grow their brand and kind of diversify and do what they love and make money with it too. So I'm going to have a Q and a with that group. It's going to be a pretty small group because it's a more, um, substantial commitment. And, uh, so <sighs> More coaching. Yeah, sorry, I'm out of breath. I talk so fast, you guys, and I get out of breath. I've only done, I've done like two lives on Amazon before, and I'm like always out of breath at the end. Um, I just want to pack in all that good information. So Marilyn's not a fan of shitty distressed look. What would you recommend to use as a finish over the paint to create a smooth, not glossy look? You don't want it glossy. Um, you can still use wax, just don't use dark wax. Um, if, you, if you don't want it shiny, I would say definitely just use wax. Um, but there's also a lot of options to do varnishes now or water-based polycrylics. So I use General Finishes High Performance Flat a lot. Um, I know Jolie, I'm starting to say that right. I used to say Jolie all the time and I just heard the owner on Instagram yesterday because she's there in Louisiana and so it's Jolie. And it's not Gesso White, it's Gesso White. So I'm going to start working on those pronunciations. But they have a new varnish out and they have two finishes. They have matte and they have a more of a sheen. Dixie Bell has tons of options. They have Gator Hide, which is a really um, waterproof, really resistant finish. That's a little bit shinier, but they also have three clear coats and three finishes too. So it just depends on the look you want. Oh, Michelle, I love the dresser. I'm not wearing my top knot tonight, you guys. I'm usually in the top knot and that's why. Because you I... painted your hair. Tell them what you I did. I did, you guys. Oh, wait, we're not supposed to. I know we're not really supposed to tell, but you guys won't tell, will you? My hairdresser, I was able to do a curbside pickup of um, hair dye. My gray hair was like to here. So I'm in such a good mood today because I was able to do my roots today. So I had been painting my hair. In fact, I was going to do a video where I painted my hair just to be funny, but we didn't do it. But anyways, to go back to that question, I have a membership for people who are wanting to build their brand um, and make money painting furniture or get a YouTube started. And so well, I'm just gonna, mentoring. yeah, it's coaching, mentoring. Um, we're gonna have like a call that we do every week and it's gonna be a group so you guys can interact with each other. I might even have like a Discord one day depending how big it gets. Um, and I'm actually gonna do um, a special thing for all you guys, for all the brand builders. You guys can submit a piece of furniture for the month. And so I'm gonna pick out of those entries I'm going to pick the piece that you know speaks to me the most and I'm going to share one piece and one artist on my channel so I'm going to feature an upcoming artist 
that's part of that brand builder team. So if you have any questions about it, you can email me. Just go to my website. It's really easy to find my information. I'm just Christina at prettydistressed.com. So you can email me and talk to me about it before you sign up and I can give you some more info on it. Um, but I have some ladies that I've already been kind of talking to that were interested in it. So hopefully we can grow a little tribe and support each other. I think that would be a lot of fun because you guys know I love YouTube and I love furniture. So I would just love to see more of you guys on here and just create a nice little This is sweet. Kayla said she's like rocking her baby to sleep and he's smiling um, and giggling watching you. Aww. We have your video pulled up on the TV. Oh, so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, as it dries, it gets lighter and lighter. Um, my, my things kind of get clogged up, so I only use these for like a little bit. I like them to be nice and clean, so I'm getting all that excess off. So I'm just gonna give this a good rub. My leg's falling asleep, so when I move, it's probably gonna be quite humorous. Were there Thanks any me. other questions that people had that they wanted me to answer? No. Okay. No, uh, Carol wants to see the front of the dresser. We've already No, we now. can't, we can't. Come <laughs> back Friday. It will be premiering Friday at 11.30 a.m. CST. I gotta keep some secrets. But I wanted to, I had to paint this anyways, and I wanted to include you guys in on it because I just need to, you know, try to go live. I'm very uncomfortable doing this, but this is a lot of fun. So I'm glad you guys are joining me tonight. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to tell you. What's this your is husband's what's, name? What's my husband's name? Can we tell? Can we tell? <laughs> is it okay? I, I mean, he's like, put in the chat. oh, okay. He's like a professional. He's like, you know, so I try to like, just let him have his anonymity if he wants to have it. I think, I think I'm going to, yeah, it would be better. Let's move up here. So I'm going to tilt sort of this up good, so that my, like, Ten seconds of what you're doing. Of what we're doing for the new people. That okay, good idea. Because someone asked. Okay, so this is my piece that I am working on for Friday's video. This was originally blue, um, just didn't go with my son's room anymore, so I wanted to tone it down and do a wood a wood theme here because his bunk bed is huge and it's shiplap and it's painted gray, hurricane gray by Dixie Belle. So I wanted something wood toned. So we're going for like a coastal look with this. So I'll give you all the details on Friday about how I stripped this down and all that. And I'm going to do the top coat on there and show you the hardware and everything. And it'll be staged and gorgeous. But tonight I had to, I didn't finish the side the other day. So I knew I had to do it today anyway. So I want to just include you guys in this and I am using Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain in Pickling White just to get this beautiful kind of coastal look here. This is gel based, oil based. Um, it's linked in the description box if you want to check it out. Um, the, one of the cool things about this is that you can go over an existing finish. So you see I have lots of kind of residual stain here. That's going to cover this up, but that's still going to give me some like beautiful shading and distressing and give it more of like that driftwood coastal look. It's not going to look as factory finished, which I love. And the really cool thing too is that there is still a little bit, this is pretty clean, but in like the nooks and crannies, there is still a lot of blue. But what's really cool about that is that blue tones down orange hues in wood. So actually in the corners and stuff where it's really like orangey, that blue tones that down, especially when you put the white over top, it just looks like all wood color. And it's just crazy how that like color theory stuff works. So if you ever have a piece that you're staining that's looking like really orangey, you can take a blue stain. Um, Dixie Belle also has these water-based stain called Voodoo Gel Stain. I've taken some of their blue denim and put that over a stain and it kind of evens out that orange. So one of those color theory tricks. Tips for staining veneer. Tips for staining um, veneer. Sabia. If it's real wood veneer, you can just treat it like a regular piece of wood. Um, I like, like I told you, I like using gel stain. I just think it's more even, it's more pigmented. Um, if you don't like working with um, gel stain, I really love, if you don't like working with oil-based stain, I really like General Finish's water-based stains. Um, I've been working with those over this past year and I really do like those as well. Um, if you're doing an oil-based stain and you want a really smooth finish with gel finish like this, a tip is that you can put a little bit of mineral spirits down as like a slip cover. That's gonna kind of act like a conditioner and it will even out your finish. But if it's veneer um, and it's real wood, you can just treat it like any other piece of wood, if that answers your question. If you need more detail, let me know. Would you say Dixie Bell has become your go-to for now? I get, I get asked this question all the time, you guys, and it's like trying to pick between my children. 
And if you have children, you, you, have might, you might understand this. I have three children and none of them are my favorites, but I love them all specifically for something special that they do. What I love about Dixie Belle, and I've said this before in videos, my hands are so sweaty right now, you guys, is that they are a one-stop shop. They have stain, they have top coats, they have wax, they have water-based stain, they have oil-based stain, they have gilding waxes, they have synthetic brushes, they have natural bristle brushes. So like whatever you're looking to do, you could buy everything in one spot, which I think is amazing because you're gonna save on shipping, you know that all the products are formulated to work together. And Dixie Belle has a great price point um, and it's a good quality product. And I just heard my dear friend Katja, you guys have heard me talk about her before. If you're not following her, you need to. But she just interviewed Suzanne, the owner of the company on her podcast on Monday. So I would encourage you to go listen to that. Like Susan is an entrepreneur. She started this from nothing and now she's grown a whole company and she's supporting a lot of people, especially right now during this time, they are busier than ever. So I know they're shipping. I just got a message on there website that shipping's taking a little longer right now because they're trying to keep all their employees safe um, as, and they're having a lot of orders coming in because you guys are stuck at home like us and are painting everything in your house which is exciting um so that's the reason like that i love uh dixie belt a lot but i still love annie sloan i love jolie a lot jolie i'm gonna start saying that right um, you guys know that I used that Waverly for the first time in the past couple of months, and that's a great option for people who are on a budget and just, you know, might want to try this out like that. I've been done two pieces with that. I've been really happy with that, but I don't like to pick a favorite paint because I don't want to be too biased and close myself off to all these options that are out there because I want to try those out for you guys because I can get my hands on them, like I can invest in trying the paint, try it on here, and then pass that info on to you so that you can make the best informed decision for what kind of paint is gonna be best for you. Because like I just tried a new paint, um, Chippy Barn Amulet Paint, it's ceramic based, it's really smooth, and I know a lot of people want a smooth look. I really don't like smooth looks at all. I do them for people when they want them. Um, but that was a great paint for that. But I probably won't use that paint again unless somebody asks for it because I don't typically do pieces smooth. I like texture and that's, I just started with chalk paint. So that's what I gravitate to and that's what I like. But and you have certain favorite colors too. That I do. Like I'm, yes. And I'm like super neutral. So I'm kind of boring in that way. Um, but I have like, I've been talking to Fusion. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to try Fusion paint because it's like an all-in-one paint. Um, I'm gonna be trying Beyond Paint in a couple of months. So I just like to try all the paints for you guys because there's so many options out there, which I think is awesome because when I started out, there were not a lot of options, so. And there have been companies that are trying to get her to be exclusive with yeah. them. And, and I just, and, and we won't name those, and we won't name but them. I just have told people like, I'm never gonna go exclusive with a paint because I just wanna, I just wanna be able to share. Be authentic. Yeah, I just wanna be able to be authentic and share with you guys you know, all the options that are out there not get pigeonholed into one paint, if that makes sense. So, uh, Country Fire. Chic, I need to try that one. Terrible. Oh! You want me to read some questions? Hold on, just one second. Okay. I also want to try DIY Paint by Debbie. I have a vendor right down the street, and now that our shops are opening back up, I think I'm going to do a curbside pickup because I've, a lot of people have been trying to tell me to use that one. That's a clay-based paint as well. But I have a good friend who uses country chic all the time. So that's another one on my list. I'm eventually going to get them all. You can read me some questions now. Terrified of oil-based products been refinishing on and off for 25 years. Can you poly over, uh, can you poly any, over Annie Sloan top paint? I think um, I so Annie Sloan, I have used general finishes, water-based top coat over Annie Sloan and I did not have it yellow. I can't guarantee you that it's not going to yellow, but I have used it over several things and did not have it yellow. But Annie has her own varnish now, which she used to not push a lot. She used to only call it floor varnish, but now she even has videos of her using that on a tabletop. So I typically recommend when you're using a certain paint, if that paint company has a top coat, use that because it's formulated to work with their paint. Um, but I have used General Finishes High Performance Flat on Annie Sloan and I like it. She would not be very happy that I am saying that, and some other people probably wouldn't agree with me, but I have had luck with it. So those would be my two options for you if you're looking for a top coat. I would not, don't ever like poly poly, like polyurethane, don't ever use it on chalk paint because it's gonna yellow. 
That's meant for oil-based products. It's meant for stain. It's meant for wood. It's oh, not I meant for paint. She said polyurethane. She said polyurethane? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you want to raw... use a water-based varnish. Is this raw wood now? This is pretty much raw wood. I have some where there's still a little bit of varnish on here um, in the corners, but I left that on because I like that shading. Because I've done something similar to this when I redid my nightstands in my bedroom, if you guys have seen that video. So I'm gonna use one of these shop towels now and see if this works. I haven't done this yet. Country Chic is clay-based. Uh, Belinda likes Junk Monkey. Okay, I've heard of Junk Monkey before. Is Country Chic can Canadian, you guys? Because all the people I know who use it are in Canada. Let me know. And do they have a website or are they on Etsy? You guys gotta educate me. Have you ever tried Bear Truck Band? The answer is no, I don't know. No, I haven't, you guys. But I just told her to do a comparison video I with do. a couple of the other brands. Like and you know, and I've there. never tried Rust-Oleum, and I know Katja has tried Rust-Oleum, and she has some beautiful pieces in it, but you guys, I keep getting so many people DMing me lately having issues with Rust-Oleum, so I want to try it, but I also it don't... Oh, it is Canadian? Okay, maybe I can get some. Um, I don't... I don't like to drag companies, so if I don't... If I use a product here at home, and I don't like it, you probably won't see it on my channel. I, I might need to change my stance on that. I just have a, I just don't want to get on here and be nasty, and so I'd rather just not show it if I don't like it. I probably need to think about that. Um, but I have, but I'm already tainted with Rust-Oleum because I get so many questions. People being like, "Ah, this did this, and it looks horrible," and I'm just like, "I don't know. I've never used that paste paint before, so I don't know. We'll see." I have like a whole list of stuff that I want to try, you guys, but I don't have any furniture right now <laughs> because I can't get furniture. So we'll get cranking here in the summer as things open up, hopefully. I hope everybody's staying healthy and are mentally healthy because I've had some rough days here where I've not felt very mentally healthy. I go back and forth, but luckily I have Michael because he is. Oh, Michael, very good. Michael, because he's very steady. <laughs> So this shop towel is working good, so I would use these. And see, I got some down here, so just make sure that you get that off. They have I a like, website and Etsy. They have a website and Etsy, okay. I like I like these better, so I'm gonna go back to this. Because these kind of like, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty thick, but if you can see, it's like already ripping there, and I don't want to get all those blue gunkies on my thing. Any more paint questions, guys, while you have me? I'm pretty good about answering your comments on um, my YouTube whenever you leave something on there. But that's something cool about my membership too, you guys, my second level. You get a badge and it notifies me when my loyalty people comment on my videos. So I'm gonna give you guys a 72 hour turnaround. So if you're working on a project and you have a question, it doesn't matter what video you post it on. If you just post a question saying, hey, like I'm working with this and I don't know what to do. Like it's gonna flag me to answer your question within 72 hours, Stay which is hour. like, I will answer your questions regardless, but I, it might take me a week or two weeks because you guys, I get so many DMs and emails and comments every day and it's like, I have to sit there and mentally think, okay, if this is my piece, what would I do? And it's just taking like so long. Um, I just wanted to be able to give this benefit to people if they, you know, support me additionally financially that I could answer your questions a little bit more quickly. So. And then there's Instagram, Instagram DMs too. And yeah. Just YouTube, it's and all Facebook, over the place. And emails. Oh gosh. And Facebook <laughs> is like the last place I ever check you guys. So if you're on here, don't message me on Facebook. I eventually get to them or he gets to them because he likes to deal with Facebook. I just don't, I don't have a lot of time to do that. Uh, I want to do chalk paint with gray and then a white on top. Never have distressed before any advice. You want to do, read it one more time. Uh, she wants a chalk paint or he or she wants chalk paint with gray and then a white on top. Never have distressed before any advice. Is that what your last video was? Yeah, that was, that so I would go watch that Annie Sloan Hutch video. It was posted like two weeks ago. If you just go to my channel and look, sorry, my nose is running. Um, that's that exact look. It's actually a gray finish with a white wash on top of it. But if you don't want to do a white wash, white wash, you can just paint the white straight on top. White wash. And I also have white wash. That's hard to say. 
just like no pain gel stain is hard to say. Um, so I am going to, oh no. So I have videos that are just about distressing. They're like my really, really old videos. But if you go into, I think I have a playlist that is called painting a piece from start to finish. And each video is broken down like step one, paint, step two, second coat of paint, step three, distressing. Um, so it, go, it gives you all the details about distressing, but basically I just distress like on edges and detailing all the way around the piece um, and just on the detailing. So anywhere around the drawer that's like raised or anything, I don't ever distress like flat areas like this. So that's like my quick tip. Um, if you are, if you want it really shabby, I would use like a 150 sandpaper. If you want um, to take it really slowly and just kind of build up that distressing or want it light, I would use like a 220 or a 400 and it's gonna take you a lot longer, but you're gonna be able to control it a lot better. And you can, I, people say, there are a lot of people that want you to distress after you wax your piece because you can have more control. I like to distress before I wax because then if I take it too far, I can add more paint. So there's two schools of thought in there as well. So you can just choose which one would work better for you. I typically distress before I wax. Do brush strokes bother you? Brush strokes do not bother me. And the reason that they don't is because I started painting in 2014. And when chalk painting was first getting popular in the States here, like around that time, that is the technique that was everywhere. That's what everybody was showing. That's how I learned how to paint. Um, and I, I like texture in my paint. I know a lot of people want it smooth, um, but I don't like that because then I think it looks like a factory finish that I could have just got at you know the furniture store down the street or from Walmart or wherever, and I like it to look hand painted. Um, but there's definitely ways to get it to look not hand painted. I have a video where I do a modern desk where I didn't really want to see brush strokes and I give tips on how to get a smooth finish. Um, you're going to want to water down your paint a little bit. You're going to want to use a special brush, brush like a synthetic brush, um, and you're going to want to sand it between coats. That's probably another reason why I don't like smooth finishes because I don't like to do extra steps. I don't like to paint the back of pieces. I don't like to paint the inside of the drawers. I don't like to paint underneath. I only paint what you see to save paint and to save time. And brush strokes and doing texture is just, it's gonna go quicker and I think it's easier. Do you have so, to use a top coat over a glaze? I don't glaze. So I don't have any answers about glaze and I can't really think of who I would defer you to, but I would think Maybe no, because it's like a top coat. I just don't know. I don't have an answer. I don't use glazes. I should probably try, but I don't have an answer. You paint an exterior door with chalk paint. Well, I know the answer is no, but maybe soon. Yeah, or, no, or I, ha redone. I haven't. But if you did paint a door, you wouldn't be able to seal it. They tell you not to seal chalk paint when it's outside. So it would be chalky and it might wash off and stuff, but I have not done, I have not done a door. Uh, new to chalk paint and a little intimidated because it's so expensive, so I'm wondering if it covers in fewer coats. Um, how many coats to cover brown wood and white? Oh, that's... With white and it's really dark, you're probably going to have to do at least three coats, um, if not four. So um, how big of a can do you think would do... Oh, a whole can would do a piece. I mean, I, I mean, you'd probably have some left over. When you're working with white, especially if you're doing like dark and you don't want to do four coats, um, you can get, you can use a primer and general finishes has one that's called like cover stain. That's really good for that. Um, just so that you can save your paint because sometimes those primers are a little bit cheaper. And I know the whole point of chalk paint is to not have to prime, but, um, with white, especially over something really dark, I think I, I have, I mean, I've obviously painted pieces like that, but it will take four coats just so you know especially when you're doing like a lighter piece like that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say about brush strokes though, is that um, sometimes when you do like three coats of like brush strokes in every direction, like it has texture, but you really can't see it that much. Like my headboard is like that. I really love my headboard and it's this basic finish that I call it. That's that, that Jolie talks about. Um, and it's just really pretty. So don't, I mean, don't be scared of brush strokes, you guys. Okay, stop the tape. She, Stop the tape. Kali has uh, watched you all the time. You never heard you say no poly on chalk before. 
What? So to make sure it's no yellowing. Yeah, it okay, so there's no a difference between polyurethane and polycrylic. So polyurethane is an absolute no-no over chalk paint. Polycrylic or water-based top coats, or what else would they be called? Acrylic top coats, anything that says non-yellowing is fine, but polyurethane is always gonna be yellowing. The Shabby Guy has good videos and glazes. Shabby Guy, I love Shabby Guy. Go check him out for glazes. I want to have him, I want to do, we had talked about doing like a little collab. So maybe I'll have him teach me how to glaze you guys and that could be our collab. Stacy wants to know how you ship a piece, but she hasn't. I have never shipped a piece, but I know lots of people that do it. Um, let me try to think of somebody off the top of my Kristen, head. Kristen at Shacto. Yeah, Kristen at Shacto Interiors probably would know how to do that. And um, shoot, there's this girl in Minnesota that was just on... Oops, that happens, you guys. Did you see that big glob I just dropped? She was just on the Zebra Podcast. If you guys haven't listened to the Zebra Podcast, um, it's a paintbrush company, and they have a podcast with furniture painters every week. It's called Before and After. Um, it's hosted by Lane Ball, their marketing guy. And me and Katja are actually going to film for that on... Oh, thank you for moving that. Are going to film not film, record for that podcast next week. So I'll let you guys know when ours is going to be live. We're going to be talking about YouTube and um, just kind of monetizing your, your brand and your furniture painting on YouTube. Oh, I just spilled a whole glass of water. Those are my nice cups too. I hope that didn't break. It didn't break, but I spilled a whole thing of water on the... Those are my custom cups. It didn't break. Mascari. Oh, that was... <laughs> that was live coming live from the garage um, but there was a painter on there that ships and she specifically has I'll try to link that below later I'll pin it in the comments I'll go look it up but she has a whole system and kit that sorry that you can buy and she tells you how to ship furniture but I have never shipped furniture before because I just haven't had a need to that could have been an easier answer sorry <laughs> That's why we need, that's why we need my husband here to keep me in. What's your favorite style? Check. She loves uh, um, the, the bedroom, our bedroom furniture, the restoration hardware look. Oh yeah. So what's your favorite style to do? Um, I would say like that, like weathered. I like weathered wood right now. And I love white furniture. And I like pretty shabby still. Um, I'm really, you know what I'm really loving a lot right now though is black. Um, I've done so many pieces with Noir, with Jolie Noir. And every time I go to paint something, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna paint this Noir. But you guys, I have like three videos with black. No, I have four, maybe three or four videos with black. I'm like, oh my gosh, people are gonna, first of all, it's horrible to film. And I'm like, you guys are gonna get sick of seeing the same thing over and over again. But I just, you, I mean, anybody who's been around here, I don't use a lot of color. <laughs> I've been trying to like challenge myself a little bit more. I had like, a, Katja and I are thinking about doing another collab and I was like, we should do a mystery box where you just, we just send each other paint and like the top coat that you have to use and you just like open it <laughs> and you don't know what it's gonna be. Cause I'm sure she'd send me like hot pink or something and I'd be like, ah! and a whole thing of gilding wax. And I'd be like, what do I do? I guess that's somewhere where I need to grow as an artist is I just like to, I just really like neutral. And so it's hard for me to step outside of the box. Like that's what I want to create for people. So. Uh, have you ever used the Stolian and the Chalk Protective Top here? I have not. Um, has anybody else, does anybody like that? Cause I haven't been hearing the best stuff about it. Do you recommend using wax or general finishes top coat on kitchen cabinets? Uh, I would say top coat. I would say probably top coat when Is I did. Heat and wax? Yeah, when I did um, my, they're just gonna clean up easier. Like if you're, if you want your cabinets to be clean and you're gonna be cleaning them a lot, I would use high performance flat. Um, Dixie Bell also you could use their Gator Hide or you could use one of their clear coats too. What's your suggestion on dressing a furniture piece bleeding through the chalk paint? 
Oh, yeah, they're, that's super easy. So all you have to do is get um, Zinzer shellac. It's in a yellow can. Um, and you're just gonna take that and put a couple of coats over the part that's bleeding. And Dixie Bell also has a thing for that. It's called um, Boss. So you're just gonna put that over there and that, that will stop the bleed through. And a way, you guys, uh, to test if you're gonna get bleed through, you can take a wet paper towel, not like super soaking, just like damp, like squeeze out as much water as you can. Usually if it's from like the 30s or 40s is when you see, when you get some of that bleed through because of the stains and the varnish they used back in that day. But if you take that damp paper towel, really wring out all the water, just set it on somewhere on the piece. Let it sit for like 30 minutes and come back. If any of that stain lifts off onto that paper towel, that's gonna show you that you really need to seal it before you start painting so that you don't get that bleed through. Uh, suggestions on painting an entire bedroom set black. Ooh. Annie Sloan, um, Athenian black. I haven't got to try Annie's black yet because I know that's kind of newer. Um, I think that would be awesome. Are your walls like light or are they dark? Uh, have you tried spray wax yet? Actually, this piece was spray This waxed. piece was spray waxed and I've only used spray wax once because I've only used it, I need to try it on different colors. So I only tried it on this Bunker Hill Blue, I think is what it's called. And I only did one coat, I probably should have done two, and I probably didn't do it heavy enough, and it got really scratched up. But this was also in like a three-year-old's room. So maybe not for a three-year-old, um, because I know, I'm gonna, I say Katja's name like 500 times, you guys, but she's like my best, my furniture best paint friend. And I talk to her all the time and she's been using that so much and she says that it's Duke proof. And if you guys know Duke, it's her big puppy dog. And he, she said he, she has no scratches on her furniture that she uses that on. So I'm thinking maybe I used it wrong. I mean, I loved it though. Like if you guys go watch um, my video, like putting it on, they call it easy peasy spray wax. Like it is so easy to put on compared to the paste wax, which, you know, can take some time to get the hang of. Um, but I did get some scratches. So I don't know if it was because of the color, I didn't use enough. So I'd always been scared to use it again. So, but I still have some, so I should probably get it out. Uh, what trends do you see coming in the future? What trends do I see? Not the life in general, but probably specific to furniture. I'm not, I'm not a trendy person. <laughs> specific to furniture. Or um, TikTok? Maybe TikTok. I'm on TikTok, you guys. Are you on TikTok? I just started, Please don't encourage her. I just started TikToking this don't week and it's so her. fun. You guys go see my videos I made this week. They're really fun. Um, I don't know. I think, I feel like the white, the white, I mean, white's always going to be popular, but I feel like more of that, like that eucalyptus, like dark or dark hunter green is super trendy right now. And gold hardware is so trendy right now you guys and every when i started everything had brass and i was covering everything that was gold i was like i don't want any gold and like gold is having a moment right now in hardware and even in lighting and homes so but you know what like i don't really care about trends i do what i like <laughs> so that's always my suggestion oh that's a really big bug that's my suggestion to everybody out there like do what makes you happy and what you like and don't be worried about keeping up with the trends and what's happening because um, you should just make what makes you happy. There's so many choices. There's so many color choices out there. You just do what makes you happy. And I think that's why I like neutrals because it's easy to match them and I'm not good at matching. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> have you tried uh, Would You Bend yet? I have not tried Would You Bend, but I've heard about it. You guys, and I was gonna, I haven't tried transfers yet either. And, but I think eventually I'm gonna have like a Prima video on here, redesigned by Prima. They like had to shut down because of everything that's going on. So um, that's kind of on hold right now, but I'm, I'm hoping to get to try transfers, which is very not me either, but I'm trying to, like I said, go out of my comfort zone and just try things that you guys might want to see. Okay, I gotta move this up a little bit here. Pretty distressed, I assume. Because I saw you use it in a video. What did you buy, Connie? that you saw me using the video. The spray wax? What's your TikTok name? Oh, it's at pretty underscore distress. It's just like the Instagram. 
Did Connie answer back what she bought? Uh, no, you just reminded her that she had some spray backs that she hasn't used yet. Oh, to, when you try it, let me know what you think. I need to pull it back out. I really do. Because it is so easy to use. It's so much easier than paste wax, you guys. Are people looking for perfect when buying a piece? Uh, no, they're not. And that's like the number one thing I can tell you when you're working on, is my like booty in here? I'm just gonna make sure my hoo-ha is not in here. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> you officially said hoo-ha. It's my hoo -ha. Uh, Oh gosh, I didn't mean to say that. I meant like my booty, but that's not what that means. Um, <laughs> so, what I'm, my number one advice to you as just a professional painter or as someone who's working on stuff for yourself, you are on top of furniture like this all day long. You're going to see every imperfection. You're going to see every piece of lint. You know it like the back of your hand. People do not look at furniture that way. No one walks up to a piece of furniture and like, oh, let me look at this. They don't get that close. So you need to, every now and then while you're working on your piece, walk out of the room, walk into the room, like from a vantage point that somebody would see the piece. Every time I go to list a piece on Marketplace or I drop a piece off at a client, I feel like 100% I'm a fraud. Like, this is horrible. Like, this is not good enough. I can't believe someone's paying me to do this, you guys. And your work is beautiful. And it's just that little voice inside that you just need to silence. And you need to not be a perfectionist and just step back and take your piece in for the glory that it is as a whole piece and not get so close up that you can't see the whole picture, if that helps. I hope that helps. But also other thing that you did is like when you were paying for people, when they came to the house, you'd show them like your furniture looked like. Yes, that's very and good. said, is this what you want to do? Yes, so you can So you can set an expectation. And like I ran into, there was a, I had a client one time that I didn't paint for clients for a while after, because I just, you know, it was a lesson I needed to learn, but she came into my house and she saw all my stuff and she's like, yeah, like this isn't, I want it like that. Like I want it really smooth. I don't want any distress and blah, blah, blah. Well, at that point I had never done anything smooth. So I should have said, even though I wanted the money and even though I wanted the job, that's not what I do. So I think, I don't think this is going to work out. So don't be afraid to say no to jobs that like, don't just take jobs because you want a job. Like it needs to be something you think that you can do. So, cause we just had different expectations and you can tell like when you're talking with a client, if you have different expectations, because if you're suggesting something and they're like, no, I don't want that. I want this. Like you have to have enough, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not respect, but you just have to have enough authority authority or like confidence is the word I'm looking for. You have to have enough confidence in yourself to believe that you know what you're talking about and that you can't, you got to feel people out to be like, can I really achieve this look for them or not? So that's another thing that I learned pretty early on in painting for clients. Uh, what is your favorite brush and suggestions, thoughts on selecting? I would yes. Say it probably assumes, depends on what you're doing, right? It does depend on what you're doing. And I just, my video last week was my favorite brushes and why I like them and how I clean them and how I take care of them. So you can go watch that later, but I will just tell you, I can do a quick rundown too. Um, my favorite chalk paint natural bristle brush right now is the Jolie Signature Brush. Um, I have an Annie Sloan brush. I have tons of brushes. That's my favorite right now. Um, my favorite chalk paint, keep bending down. My favorite most like beginner affordable brush that I learned how to paint on is not a chalk paint brush, but it's called a Purdy White Bristle Brush. And I mentioned that in that video as well. It's a great brush to start off with. It's a sash brush. It's like nine to $12. And you can get it on Amazon and it, they sell it at certain hardware stores. I don't think they have it at Home Depot. I know they have it at Menards, but I know that's really regional to people. We don't have that down in Tennessee. Oh, <gasps> but we had it in Illinois. I know I'm out of breath. Very fast. Out of breath. I'm trying to pack in all the information. Um, but for Dixie Bell paint, I really like the angled mini. Um, it's it's gonna give you a smoother look if you're going for like a smoother look with Dixie Bell paint. And what are the other ones? I really like zebra brushes right now. I just like the way that they're supporting furniture painters in the community. And they have a bunch of different specialized brushes that can help you get like in the detail up here, like in these little crevices here without slapping a bunch of paint on. So I talk about those in that video. And that just posted last week, so it should be pretty, pretty easy to find. 
and I list all the links and all the prices and stuff too. But if there's a specific thing that you're looking to achieve and you want a recommendation for a brush, let me know and I'll give you more tips. Uh, Fourth and Olive is currently doing her staircase. Okay. I feel like I can't get the white paint smooth. I've seen it in between everything. Any suggestions? Oh my gosh, on the banister or just on the stairs? And what kind of paint are you using? I don't have that answer. Oh. So you're going to have to ask for and Olive. <laughs> oh, wait, what? She doesn't know what kind of paint she's using? No, she didn't say, so I can't answer that question. Oh, that's what, no, I'm asking her to answer oh. it. Sorry, I thought that was clear. I'm almost done with this, you guys. You've made this go really fast. Does anybody have any questions about this technique that I'm doing? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you need more time with it? Do you need to see the whole piece? I think I need a new cloth. What about laser brushes? I don't really like them, if you want my honest opinion. Oh, Jeanette, uh, Jeanette agrees with you. Okay. Uh, latex. I would get, if you want an affordable, cheaper brush, the that pretty brush is like the same cost as those Waverly brushes. Those Waverly brushes, they're just trying to be chalk paint brushes, but they didn't they're just not good quality, you guys. The bristles are very good quality. Uh, okay, it's the spindles. She bought latex paint, the one you suggested in your video. Is it an oak? Is it oak like mine was? And has that really strong grain? It's very difficult to have a conversation with. I know. I'm sorry. You know what? Email me. Christina at prettydistress.com and I'll talk to you about it. Because if it's that Sherwin-Williams paint, that stuff is really self-leveling. I don't know what's going on there. It might be a case where you need to take a step back. Might be one of those cases. <laughs> but email me and we'll talk about it. Do you have a video on pricing furniture? Do I have a? Yep. No, I don't. But I have one in the works because that, if you guys saw that, my Kacha video where I did the mustard dresser, that has a top. So in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be finishing the top. And then I'm gonna do another video where I try to sell it. And I'm gonna sell it priced as just a dresser. And then I'm gonna sell it priced as a hutch and see, and put them both up on Marketplace and see which one I can get more money for and how quickly and all that. And I'll talk about pricing um, in that. And I can even like throw up a, what I used to use for my invoice when I would invoice people and how I would charge out for my work. I can go all over that in a video if you guys are interested in the next month. I think that would be fun. Uh, so we bought the no paint gel stain after watching you use it, but she is intimidated to use it. Any beginning tip? <gasps> well, that's what you're using right now. And that's what I'm using right now. Look how easy it is. It's so easy. Um, it's no paint. And this, and so the only time I think, wait, did you watch the desk video or the um, sea glass dresser? Which video was it? Because this is the same technique that I used on the dresser, and but I can give you more tips if you want to do like a tabletop. Dana's really pushing to show the front. Show the front, show the front. How many people are on here? 165. If you guys promise that you will come watch my video on Friday, maybe I'll show you the front at the end. Maybe. If you promise you'll come watch the video. Whoever thought we'd be spending our Saturday nights, you guys, doing, doing this? Who wants to go out to eat or to a movie or something? Are you having fun at home? Are you introverted or extroverted? Uh, Miss Morgan bought Jolie to work for a little table. Hoping to use general finishes flat to seal it. Will, it be, will that be okay? I haven't ever used the, it on a color that dark. When you use it on a color that dark, you risk hazing, which is because of the way that is made so that it doesn't yellow. The, when it hardens, it can get hazy on dark colors like that. You don't notice it on white or lighter colors because it just blends in with it. So I, I think you would be better off, I think you would be happier using a wax or specifically a black wax, because that's gonna be easier for a beginner to do black. Um, hemp oil is actually really good on black as well. Um, so the, I really probably wouldn't use it on there. 
I'm sorry if you don't want that answer. I hope you didn't open your general finishes so you could send it back maybe or save it for a different project. I already forgot what we were talking about with Colin before, um, but she said swag pads and sea glass. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is the exact same technique that I'm using right here. Do you see how easy this is? I didn't even do a slip coat or anything. So you just put it on the raw wood like this and you just wipe the excess back. There's like, I know this is a little grainy because we're on an iPhone and live, but there's no, sure great. there's no streaking. There's no streaking. I mean, it's super, it's super easy. The only thing you just really want to be careful about is read all your safety information. Dry your rags out, put them in a metal container and water. Like when they're done to clean them off, just like, Wear a respirator. Wear a respirator. <laughs> have ventilation. Because I know you guys can't get respirators right now. It's basically impossible. Like I, you know, I used to link mine on here, but I don't know when those are going to be available again. It's probably going to be a really long time. Um, so just make sure ventilated, ventilated, ventilated. And if you have a face mask at home, that's cloth one, that's probably better than nothing. Um, but you know, the, the oil-based products and a lot of paint products have that prop 65, whatever that is from California. So it has those moorings on there. So just like, just be careful you guys. And if you're intimidated to work with products like this and feel uncomfortable, don't do it. There's a lot of water-based ones out there that you can try too. You could also try, you could try Voodoo Stain to do this. I don't know if it would be as smooth and even as this, um, but we can do that in a video sometime soon because I also have that, but I like this gel stain one. Uh, she said she got black wax as well, so she was glad she asked. Okay, I would do the black wax. I just think it's going to make your black richer, and I think it's easier. Black can be pretty tricky for a beginner. Have you done something before? Uh, just paint it with Pixie Bell and ready to add on wax um, or general finish flat. Which one? She has the Pixie Bell. What color did you paint? What color um, GR1 RM4? I'm going to say wax because I just like wax, you guys. I think wax is the prettiest finish white. and white. I would do wax. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Wax, kid, wax right? is so forgiving on white, you guys. It's it's so forgiving on white. And I think wax holds up great. People say you have to re-wax stuff. And I have never had to re-wax any of my pieces. And all our pieces are waxed except for the top of our kitchen table is um, General Finishes high performance flat, but it's also on top of a stain. It's not on top of a chalk paint. Um, but the only time I really use those top coats is because you guys want to see them. Um, and because on a ta on a kitchen tabletop that you eat at every day, Pretty even good. on, even on our dining table, you guys, the top of our dining table is waxed. I just love wax. Are you going to varnish this? Oh, thank you for asking. Cause I am going to take your votes. So I am gonna, the thing about gel stain that super stinks, and this is why I didn't get my video done, um, it has to be dry for three to five days before you can top coat it because I'm gonna use a water-based top coat because Dixie Bell doesn't make a um, oil-based one. So you have to wait for this to completely cure for three to five days. But since I'm doing such a light coating, I think three days is gonna be fine. So my choices are Dixie Bell clear coat in flat, because I only use flat, as you can tell, um, or gator hide. So you guys vote in your comments which one you would rather see. Okay, Michelle just said something very funny to make you laugh. What'd she say? Um, she just texted her friend and said, this is my new Saturday night watching the live food. I know, <laughs> right? We are like lame city. Get the wine out. I hope you have wine. I hope you guys have wine right now. I mean... Uh, where does one find links to merchandise to talk about during videos? Description box. Description box, which is if you're on your phone, right there's by the arrow. title, there's an arrow. And if you click that, it'll take you to the description box. That's where you have. And I have like the how to join the membership down in there. I have um, how you can follow me on Instagram. Ooh, I need to add my TikTok in there. How you can follow me on TikTok and see all my dances. And um, my newsletter, my website, I think my email's down there. 
Uh, usually what music I use is down there. All my stuff I use, like my camera, like everything's down there. And you don't have to top coat it, right? You're choosing to, to protect it. Um, yeah, I'm choosing to because this is going in my five-year-old's room, so who knows what he's gonna do to it. Um, but sometimes in my own home, like I wouldn't necessarily top coat this because I like the raw wood look. Do you have any issues with gator hide yellowing over white paint? Um, I had issues with it yellowing over like a, hold on, let me get this up. Okay, I'm pretty much done with this, you guys. So I'll just answer your questions now. I had it, I had it yellow over, what was that color? Dried sage. So it was like kind of a greenish, like sandbar color, like a beige color, um, because I put way too much on. So um, I haven't used it on white, but I could see that happening because it does seem like it yellow is a little bit more than the clear coat. Um, when you're voting, the clear coat seems to be a little bit more crystal clear, but that is also because if you put gator on gator hide on too thick, it's going to yellow. So I learned that lesson the hard way. I put it on way, way, way too thick. So you want to do thin, thin coats with that. What made you sell the fact that this breath. piece near the kitchen table? I'm assuming it's that Dixie Bell one, the blue sea glass one. I mean, I didn't, cause I didn't have room for it. You guys, I it loved it. It was too much furniture in our house. It was, it was too big. <laughs> like I had it behind, like I totally would have kept that because I thought it was gorgeous. Um, I really loved it. Um, but we really don't have room for anything else in our house. So I would have to get rid of something and I'm not going to get rid of Eleanor's hutch. So, um, just the way our house is. Yeah. I didn't have room for it anywhere. So I had to part with it. Um, and that hutch, that chippy barn hutch that I just did, I just sold that last week. Um, so yeah, I got to just sell stuff now, but this is staying. So that's fun. So it's fun when I get to work on stuff that's staying. How do you clean wax furniture? Oh no, this is good. How do I clean wax furniture? I just dust it. Um, and you can use a Clorox wipe on occasion, probably like once a month or once every two weeks. I don't really like scrub my furniture because I just don't think it needs it. Um, and if it has like a little stain or something on it, just a little bit of warm water and mild Dawn soap is how I clean it off. Did anybody vote for what top coat you want me to use? Nothing? Uh, Dana said Dixie Bell flat will be easy to use. I'd go that route. Oh, I love you. You're so nice to me. She could be talking about a different color. That's, is that that old, that old Dana? Mm -hmm. Are you going to start a YouTube channel, Dana? I feel like you need to. You have so much good information. She was just giving all good tips on Katja's live painting the other day. I think everyone's just waiting to see the front. Did we get votes to see the front? No. <laughs> We're done. So I guess I can show the front. If there's any more questions, I'll let you guys get to the rest of your wild Saturday night. Thanks for being here and sticking around for like an hour. You guys are awesome. 42. My husband is like totally done with this. My hands are like so sweaty. Let me see if I can move this light and I might show you the front. Do I like it? I don't like these handles that are on it right now. All right, I'll show you. You guys talk me into it. Careful. Careful. Don't spill things. No, I thought you were going to electric. Okay, yourself. hold on. I'm going to I'm gonna flip you guys around and I'm oh, showing so you. Oh, you're a messy garage. I know. My garage is really messy, you guys. Oh, and me. I won't, I won't show you, but yeah, here, here's don't. the front. So I want to change this hardware up because it's just too, it's too gold. I can't get the whole thing in the shot, you guys. What do you think? It's really cool. You're gonna be shocked when you see the way that it looked like before. In Scotland, late in bed watching. Awesome, Sarah. <laughs> so this is it. And so on the front, there's a lot more of that blue, but I really like how it's like toning down and really making the uh, front stick out. Wait till you guys watch me strip this thing. It's completely horrible. Yeah, but I like the size of the hardware, but I do need to change the color. It's too gold. Two gold. I think I'm gonna. Nice I think I'm gonna darken it up. They asked what? Nice oh, it did go nice with the navy. So, so you guys gotta come back. You gotta promise. I showed you. I'm gonna flip it back around. Oh, well, let me show you the top because the top is kind of the top. The top looks good too as well. 
I know it's gonna be extreme close up, extreme close up. I'm gonna come back over here. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. Um, hopefully I will do some more, more of these. It wasn't that painful, so. Um, no, they did get a nice, quickly a shot of my championship trophy from youth football. Oh, they did? That has made four moves. I'm glad that they got to see that. Um, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, check out all the info for the products that I used. If you guys have any questions, you can leave them down in that comment box. Um, can't think of anything else. You learned a lot. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. You guys are the best. Got to finish on the double wave. Do the double wave. Okay, I will be back on Friday with the reveal of this whole piece. Hopefully some fresh looking hardware. And keep voting in the comments for that top coat because I will be top coating in about three days once this is all dry. Thank you guys for being here and I'll see you next time. You guys are the